my name is Jasper and I will present today's lecture on Introduction to Software Engineering. And this is one of the lectures in the first theme in 2D V604 Software Architecture. The question we'll try to answer today is what is software architecture? Uh, software architecture might to some of you be abstract, uh, unclear, uh, vague. Uh, in this lecture we will try to, to at least give you uh, some understanding of what could be because uh, as you will see software architecture can help software developers to answer and communicate uh, many things to different stakeholders in their projects. So uh, software architecture is all about design decisions and design decisions is something that some th something that we make throughout the development process where we face problems we analyze the problems we look for options to to solve the problems we put the options next to each other we evaluate them and eventually we agree or we come to the conclusion that we should use a specific solution. Just to, to exemplify what a problem solution pair could be, uh, for a very simple programming exercise, well, you as a designer slash programmer must answer a couple of very basic questions. For instance, how do you store information in your applications? Well, for that, you can select among various options, data structures, and you should and uh, you prob probably would pick the best and here's the best the data structure that is best fit for the task you are uh, working on. The second design decision is how you process the information. Well the information you store in data structures you should do something with it and depending upon what you have to design an algorithm. Sometimes you can pick and choose from existing algorithms and just adopt them and adapt them for your purposes. So two examples of simple problems and solutions that uh, hopefully tells you a little bit more about what a design decision is. When we make solutions there will be a number of decisions and when we have a number of decisions it's very interesting because these decisions are dependent so in this picture here we have a decision x and a decision y and if we make decision x first it could well be that that decision restricts the options we have at hand to solve the problem that eventually resulted in decision Y. So in that sense the decision X restricts the decision Y. So think about the simple programming exercise once more. How you process information depends on how you store information. Okay, so our decision on how to store the information creates a dependency to the decision for how we will process it. So the cho choice of algorithm depends on the data structure. So some algorithms works much better on certain data structures compared to others. Okay, so now we have design decisions and we see that there are decisions that are depending on each other. But what happens if we scale this up? The simple programming exercise is fun and you can discuss some of the very basic issues. However, if we scale things up, we will run into much more interesting problems. In this case, for instance, we have a fairly large system and a large system can always be divided into subsystems. So let's just for fun, take this system and divide it into five subsystems. 
five subsystems are five domains where in principle we could have five architects, five designers working on a design for just one subsystem. But there will always be challenges connected to an approach like that. If you have different designers responsible for subsystem design, there will be, as you saw in the previous slide, decision that creates dependencies to other decisions. And some of the decisions you make for a subsystem will span multiple subsystems. So if you make a decision for one, it could affect many other subsystems. Could also be the case that you make one decision for many subsystems. So just by scaling this up, you will see two interesting things that pop up. One decision for multiple subsystem and a single decision in a single uh, subsystem that affects other subsystems. So these decisions that have effects on other subsystems may be referred to as strategic or strateg strategical decisions. Uh, and as a designer, you face the challenge to create a system that has some functionality and also meet some, some, meet some quality requirements. And uh, for a large scale system that we divide into subsystems, well, we need some kind of level or tool abstraction level where developers can can discuss and reason about these decisions that spans more or less all components or have a single decision that has an effect on multiple components and that answer is software architecture because that software architecture provides developers with the tools necessary to discuss and reason about these strategical discussions, decisions. And, and uh, that's the level uh, where you can look at design options, you can analyze the impact, you can trace dependencies, etc. So to some extent, architecture provides developers with new tools to start dealing with certain types of questions early in the design process before you split out, you spawn off your sub projects that work more or less independently. The reason why you would like to split up your systems into a set of subsystems is of course that you can decompose a problem, you can decompose a solution, and decomposition means that you take something that is complex and you divide it into its pieces, and each piece can be dealt with in separate, which means that at the end of the day you will probably have something that is slightly easier to manage compared to the whole when you work with the parts. However, if you just divide it into parts, well, problem solving for a complex system would be just to find the best pieces and put them together. But, and you know there's always a but, the thing is that there are no guarantees that these pieces will work together. Why? Well, you remember the dependencies. Some decisions made locally may create dependencies to other decisions. 
And if you just pick the best pieces without considering the other pieces in the puzzles, puzzle, well, it might well be that these pieces will not fit, will not work together. So uh, we come back to the example and now we think about this decomposition and say, okay, let's talk about the decomposition for functionality. Well, the problems with scale here, we divided the system into subsystems and we assign responsibilities. That is that we divide the responsibilities and assign them to the subsystems. But if we do that, we must keep in mind that some of the decisions creates dependencies and it might well be that these pieces don't work together. They don't fit. So how can we deal with that? Well, what we need in this case is to sort out the connections, the relationships between subsystems to uh, allow for lo local decisions. So that, that means that we isolate local decisions so that they don't extend into other subsystems in the system. And how do we do that? Well, here we need architecture again. So uh, in order to isolate decisions in our subsystems, software architecture is a perfect tool. So uh, what we do is at this level, in our decompositions, we introduce well-defined interfaces. So the components, they show the other components what they offer to them in terms of services. That's like a contract. And then you can connect components and they can work together through these interfaces. So interfaces actually remove these mismatches, these problems. And by that, we can actually manage all these problems, the system decision dependencies that span multiple subsystems, different designers responsible for the subsystem designs. As long as designers agree on the interfaces, they should be fine. And if you make one decision, you can make that decision at the architectural level too. So uh, different designers responsible for subsystem design are sorted out via interfaces. The principles that controls whether or not a system that we decompose fulfills all the requirements the system as a whole should exhibit is referred to as system integrity. It is important that some rules for the system is set before we decompose. It's very important to remember this, that we cannot achieve a cohesive system using bottom-up design where you design parts first and then put parts together. There you will face lots of difficulties if you choose to do that. So what we should do is to make these decisions that affect multiple subsystems before we decompose, before we go in and design the individual subsystems. Because these decisions are design constraints that affects all subsystems, or most of them at least. So in order to manage system art integrity, we make architecture decisions. And our architecture decisions, well, you saw that we could do decomposition with interfaces to manage different designers. If we make the architecture decisions, the de decisions that affects the entire system before we decompose, well, what happens is that we can manage scale in a different way. 
if you manage these three problems at one level, the architecture level with our architectural decisions. So architectural decisions, well, those are the strategic decisions designers, managers, executives, and also to some extent, regular programmers, developers make during the course of a project. So architecture is not a phase in development. It's a category of decisions that stakeholders make in a project. It's about the principal design decisions. It uses high level key abstractions. So we focus more on high level than too many details. And it's important also that at this level, we structure these abstractions, decompose them for instance, and show how they can interact using interaction mechanisms. So uh, when it comes to architectural decisions, there are many examples of decisions at the architectural level. We saw problems, solution pairs, or a number of decisions leading to a solution. Well, functionality is one aspect that you can make decisions about at the architectural level. You can assign the responsibilities to subsystems. Architectural decision. How you store information. If you have a system that you decompose into subsystems, maybe you should decide on beforehand how these subsystems should store information, how you should achieve persistency. Doing that, well, if you have the design constraints, you have the design rules, when the subsystem designers go to work, then by that, it will be much easier for you to achieve integrity in your system as you combine the subsystem back together. How to communicate. If you have different subsystems, how, do, how should these communicate? Should they be uh, network? Should it be uh, uh, a monolith where you have function calls? It's important to, to, to think about these things on beforehand. And all these are architectural decisions. Just to show you an example, here is a simple application. Users, they can share documents. So what is most important? What are the most important requirements for this application? Well, we have functionality, which is like share files. Users should uh, be able to share files in this, this application. But then, well, we have all these quality requirements as well. Performance, security, reliability, etc. And it turns out that these are really tough tougher than most of the functional ones. Moving on, this is our team. We have Peter, Paul, we have Mary. Peter, he's the front-end guru, and, and Mary is the back-end guru. And uh, Paul, Paul, he's the manager, and he's responsible for talking to the customer, and he's also responsible for managing Peter and Mary. And Paul, he would like for efficiency to, to have Peter and Mary to work on the client and server sides. So Peter on the client and Mary on the server without too much daily coordination because as soon as they work together, they start talking about other things than work. So Paul, he wants an upfront decision. He wants an upfront decision about functionality. Which functionality should go into the server side and what functionality should be on the client side. This is, is important because he has to go back to the customer and tell the customer that, hey, in this system, we will provide you with this functionality. But he would also like to avoid daily contact where Peter and Mary talk about other things than work. So he would like them to divide first, decompose, allocate responsibilities so they can go and work on their subsystems separately. However, there are also these 
qualities. For instance, security. Security is a decision that or is a series of decisions that will have an effect on the client side and on the service side. So, so for instance, Peter can't deal with security without Mary, and Mary can't deal with security without Peter. But Paul still wants them to work separately. So we must decide, or they must decide, before they split up, how they should implement, how they should achieve security in the system. So decisions is a continuous process where people talk, discuss, elicit requirements, find design options, design alternatives, evaluate them, contrast them, decide which option to choose. Take that option, integrate it with the existing architecture, adopt it until it works. But in order to, to communicate decisions, because this is important, communicate decisions, you need some way to do that efficiently. And when you decide, well, in this small example, we had Paul, who was the manager, Peter married developers, and there was a customer. So we have a couple of stakeholders here. And these stakeholders, they all have a stake in the system. They are interested in our decisions or the decisions about the system. But what are they interested in? Well, they are interested in these decisions that has an effect on the system as a whole. Peter is not necessarily interested in low-level details of Mary's server-side implementation. He's interested in things that she does that affects his work and vice versa. Paul, he's interested in what Peter does and what Mary does, but not the details of the implementations of their subsystems. So each of the stakeholders, they have an interest in one or more concerns. Here are just five different concerns. There are many more than this, but performance, functionality, security, persistency, usability, just a couple of examples of concerns that could be of concern to, could be a concern to Paul, could be a concern to Peter and Mary, or the customer. So functionality, for instance, that is something that is a concern that Paul is interested in, the customer are interested in it, and Peter and Mary are interested. So now the decisions we make about functionality should be communicated to the different stakeholders. But the different stakeholders, they don't have exactly the same interest. Paul, he's not interested about all the details. The customer is definitely not interested in all details. They are more interested in what functionality will be in the system. So we have to find a couple of variations, of variants of what we communicate to our stakeholders. And to do that for functionality, we introduce a concept called view. And a view is a representation of a set of decisions for a concern which are tailored for a stakeholder. So Paul, he will get his view on the functionality of the share file system. The customer will get his or her view, her, her view on functionality. And Peter and Mary will get their view on this. So by that we can Taylor, we can meet very specific requirements and information from various stakeholders. We will talk a lot about this in, 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 uh, in the next uh, themes, because this is a very important aspect of communication uh, and 
communicating architectural decisions. So answering what is software architecture? Well, it's about stakeholders, their concerns, and making, documenting, communicating, managing the strategic design decisions we make about our software systems. That is software architecture. There are a couple of more uh, other lectures for theme one. Uh, there is one which is a lecture that focuses more on the decomposition strategy to manage complexity. And there is one introduction lecture to stakeholder concern viewpoint or views. Uh, and in addition, we have a motivational a motivation lecture that gives you a little bit more information what why we use software architecture as a level of abstraction and what could be used for in our software development and system development projects. So uh, thank you very much and see you soon.